Welcome back everyone. We're in chapter 12 now and the uh, chapter is solutions. 12.1 is also the basic definitions of solutions. A lot of times you think of a solution as being a liquid. It's something that's blue or yellow or or something that something is dissolved into something like salt water is a solution or mouthwash is a solution. Seawater is a solution. Milk is a solution. Blood is a solution. But you also have uh, gases like air. Air is a solution. You can have solids inside of solids. Uh, brass is a solution. You could have any numbers of things where you have solids inside of liquids, um, like seawater is where you have salt, which is a solid embedded or dissolved inside of a liquid. You can have gases inside of liquids. That's called a foam, like, uh, like shaving cream. You can have uh, any numbers of things dissolved into other things, and that's what we're studying in this chapter. So first we need some definitions. A solute is something that's dissolved. So if you dissolve salt into water, uh, the water is dissolving the salt, and so what's being dissolved is a salt. That's a solute. A solvent is what is dissolving the solute. So if water is, being, is dissolving salt, then water will be the sol solvent, and salt would be the solute. So normally, uh, it's easy to see. You have something small into something big. Um, there is the case where you could have two things dissolving into each other. Um, that's a special case. But in the case of just dissolving salt or sugar, say, um, or something to where one thing goes into another, um, that's, that's a, a, uh, a solution. So a solution is a solvent that's dissolving a solute. So if uh, the one thing I need to say is it's homogenous. Uh, we saw that in the previous slide. Um, a homogenous means it's homogenized. It's everywhere the same. So if you look at Kool-Aid and take any sample you want, you're going to find water and red dye and sugar. All of those are going to be um, anywhere the same. That's a, that is a homogenous solution. So a solution that's homogenous is everywhere it's the same. And so... Um, if, you, if that's true, it's spread evenly throughout the, sep, uh, throughout the solution and is normally not able to be separated by a filter. So a filter is got a size. This is like a piece of paper or some cloth or something that where water, say, is very small, can pass through it, but something big, like a pollutant, would stay on one side. If you have something homogenized where it's everywhere the same, normally those, those particles are so small that they will also go through the filter. So usually a solution doesn't go through, uh, can't be separated by filtration. You can evaporate it. You can boil it, and then that water vapor is going to leave the solids behind in the pan, and then when all the water is evaporated off, you're going to have the solids. And so that's a way that you can separate something that's dissolved. Um, usually once something's dissolved it's it's invisible you can't see it it's like salt dissolved in water you can't see this the white salt anymore but the solution can have a tint or a or a color based upon what's dissolved in it so we're going to see some some different things in the lab that when you dissolve it in water it makes beautiful colors and so uh, a lot of times this color is dependent upon the the solute itself here's some examples uh, I said that you think of it as being like water, uh, a liquid like mouthwash or seawater, but there's all kinds of examples. Uh, a gas inside a gas, air is a perfect example because you have oxygen is just 20% of breathing air, uh, nitrogen being about 70%, so nitrogen is the, the bigger gas, and so oxygen is actually dissolved into the nitrogen to form air. Um, a gas in a liquid, if you have carbon dioxide gas, put it high pressure into a liquid, it will dissolve. So uh, oxygen dissolves in water, that's how fish breathe. Carbon dioxide dissolves in water, that's how the, the um, Coke and Sprite gets its bubbles uh, at high pressure. Uh, you can have liquids inside a liquid. So say acetic acid or vinegar inside water. The acetic acid, vinegar is mostly water, but the, the tart quality of vinegar is the acidic acid inside that water, so it's a, it's a mixture. You can have uh, liquids in solids and solids and solids and solids in liquids. Solids and liquids would be like seawater, where you have a hard salt that's dissolved in the water. So, so a lot of times you have to kind of 
expand your thinking here a little bit and say, oh, you can dissolve almost anything into anything given the proper conditions. Um, one that's a little harder to think about is, is solids inside solids. Um, normally you can't fit two solids together. They're not going to dissolve. They're just going to kind of bump into each other. Uh, so if you were making brass, you would have to melt these solids down. Or even if you're making chocolate, you're going to have to melt them down and then you incorporate them, stir them, and then let them cool. And they kind of blend together while they're a liquid. And then when they cool, they are they continue to, to uh, have that be the homogenized um, mixture that you're that you're looking for, say in 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 a chocolate bunny or or in a brass bell, whatever. Water is the most common solvent, and water is a very interesting solvent because it's it's called it's polar. Poles means there's one side and another, and if you look here at the at the uh, water molecule, the red is representing oxygen. Hydrogen is the white. Oxygen's eight times bigger. Okay, it has eight protons rather than one. And since it's sharing a pair of electrons, they're not shared equally. The oxygen is pulling those negative electrons to itself stronger than the hydrogen is pulling it. What that does is it, it effectively makes the negative uh, electron pair closer to the oxygen because it's being pulled tighter. And now that oxygen side has more of a negative quality because the electrons that it's pulling is negative. And since it's pulling away from the hydrogen, that hydrogen side is partially positive. So we see that you have the hydrogen side is, is a positive side, the oxygen is negative. So now that water molecule is acting like a magnet where it's got a north side and a south side. These, these uh, properties can then pull on each other. That's called hydrogen bonding where the oxygen, the red oxygen is pulling or having an attraction towards the hydrogen. And, and conversely with the hydrogen and oxygen. So all kinds of things are explained by this. And this pull is the, is the reason why that things that are also polar, like, like sodium chloride where it's got positive and negative charges, can be pulled or ripped apart by water. This water is acting like a magnet pulling on the positive end of a, pol of a mol polar molecule like salt and ripping the sodium off or pulling on the negative end and ripping the chlorine off, and that's dissolving the salt. So uh, it's, it's really beautiful. Let's look at the uh, kind of a picture of it. If this is a salt particle here, salt's made up of sodium, which is very small, and chlorine, which is bigger. Okay, it's farther down the, the period of, of, the, of that row. So you have a small, um, the small radius of the, of the sodium positive, and then the chlorine is bigger. Um, it doesn't matter the size. If you have a, a water molecule, that water is free to move. It's in the liquid state or even in the gas state. And so the positive ends of the hydrogen can, can be attracted to this negative chlorine. And it orients itself so that it kind of pulls it. And it can actually yank it off and dissolve the salt. That's why it always dissolves from the surface. If you grind salt up into a powder, it dissolves faster. The, the, the smaller it is, the faster it dissolves. The chunkier something is, the faster, the slower it dissolves. And it, it, it works that way when, when you're burning something, but it definitely works that way when you're dissolving. If you want to grind something up, it'll dissolve much faster. So at the end of this, you're going to end up with, say, a positive particle here, the sodium, where the negative oxygen sides are all surrounding it. So you're surrounding the particle. So the solute is being surrounded by the solvent. Now, generically, that's called solvated. If a solvent surrounds the solute, it's called solvated. In the specific case of water, that's called hydrated. And so hydrated is just an, another form of solvation. Uh, but water is such a common uh, solvent that it has its own name. So um, you've got several of these water molecules surrounding each of these particles. So what's happening is now each of these water molecules, even though there's in this glass of water there may be billions and billions of water molecules, if you have lots of salt, these water molecules are now occupied. They're busy. So as long as there's water, free water to, to surround things, lots of extra water to surround more things, you can keep dissolving. You can put more and more salt in that water. But there will be a time that it will eventually fill up where every single water molecule in that jar is busy surrounding one of those particles 
in that case, you can't add any more salt. If you were to add more salt, it would just pile up at the bottom. Okay, that's called, that's called saturation. It's saturated when all the water is occupied. It's unsaturated as long as you have extra water to do more with. So um, th this really only attracts if it's polar. So polar meaning there's one side that's positive, one side that's negative. Water is a beautiful polar solvent. So this would be like water. Uh, salt, we're looking at table salt, is a beautiful polar um, solute that water will rip apart and actually separate the, hyd the, the sodium from the chlorine and, or chloride and it will break it apart into, into ions. So this polar solution is made from a polar solvent and a polar solute. It works also with nonpolar. If you were to have something that's nonpolar, um, say you know, fingernail polish is nonpolar, and you have acetone, which is a nonpolar uh, solvent, it will dissolve that, that fingernail polish. So you, that's what you clean your fingernails off with if you paint your fingernails. So if you were to put salt in acetone, which dissolves fingernail polish, it wouldn't do anything to the salt because it's polar and the fingernail polish is nonpolar. So the salt would simply just go to the bottom of the jar. You would think because it's wet, it should dissolve the salt, but it doesn't. The, the salt stays just crystalline and white and solid and just falls to the bottom of the jar. Okay, So we're going to see that you have something that's kind of a rule of thumb, and that is like dissolves like. So here's that example. Water takes this solid uh, polar, this is a polar solvent, this is a polar solute, and it breaks it completely apart because the positives yank on the negatives, the, the negative side yanks on the positives, and it completely separ separates it, dissociates it. Okay. So here's that trend that like dissolves like. So if you have something that's polar like water, it will dissolve a polar solvent, a solute. If you have something nonpolar like hexane or acetone or any kind of non nonpolar uh, so gasoline, it will dissolve nonpolar. So you, you would pour gasoline on your hands when you have paint on your hands and you and the water won't do anything to it. The water won't wash it off, but you but the paint or paint thinner will, that's a nonpolar solvent. And then um, here's a last picture from the lab. If you were to add two nonpolar, a polar and a nonpolar together, they don't mix, they don't dissolve. They will form phase. A phase is that line where you have two layers. So if you were to have two, uh, two polars of whatever, you would get a mix, they would mix together and dissolve into each other. But if you have a polar and a nonpolar, because they're so different in how they're put together, they will not blend and they will not dissolve. And so you end up with layers. So you have the oil, which is nonpolar, sitting on the vinegar, which is polar, in your salad dressing. And that's why you have to shake the salad dressing when you're making a salad. So I hope this uh, helps you. You can look at this uh, as many times as it takes for you to, to catch on. And, uh, and I'll see you in class.